hand over to you. I'm well, so excited thank, to hear your keynote. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a real honor and pleasure for me to be here. I think I can share my screen. Uh, tell me when you can see my PowerPoint. Can everybody see my PowerPoint? Okay, everybody, uh, everybody, yes, fantastic. Okay, well, it's a real honor and privilege to be here. And I am astounded and astonished and amazed by the enthusiasm of everybody who's spoken so far. Um, I'm going to talk about the Union of Arts and Medicine for a Better World. And I'm gonna talk about the power of art. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed the world we live in. Most people look at the negative sides, but I think it's important to look at the positives. And for me, one of the positive sides has been that we are, have been able through internet to meet and connect with incredible people working all over around the world. So for me, it's been a real honor and privilege to meet Kunle Adewele and to discover what he and his team are doing, the work they're doing. So I thank you, Kunle, and I thank all your team and the other the co-presenters, Erica and Raya, and I thank the Global Arts in Medicine project, which is astonishing. Thank you. This is a bowl which has been broken and it's been repaired again with gold. This is an old Japanese technique uh, which embellishes or makes more beautiful something which has been broken. Well, I believe that the world breaks us all at one time or another. We are all patients at one time or another. But as Hemingway said, the world breaks everyone and afterward many are strong at the broken places. So I'm going to speak about the transformative power of art in healthcare, but in all society, all societies and all cultures. I sincerely believe, as, was, as we heard earlier, together we can heal the world. I'm going to divide my talk into three principal sections. My personal background, because this plays a very important role in why I'm interested in this connection between art and medicine. Then the question, what has art to do with medicine? Well, many people ask this. Many doctors, maybe many healthcare professionals do not see how important the connection is. And then I'm going to explain some of the benefits and then give a very personal uh, and, and beautiful example of the power of art. I am not a doctor, I am not an artist, but I come from a very medical family. And my father was a surgeon in Liverpool. And in 1983, I think to some extent, he was a pioneer in the introduction of murals into the hospital. He was able to get together some beautiful artists, Donald McKinley, Clement McAleer, Bridget Riley, whose work you can see here, and others, for example, Adrian Henry. And they, they, were, they painted the walls of the hospital to improve, to improve the quality for the patients and also the healthcare professions. I'd also like to thank Janina Serbatovic, who is, I, I know, listening here with us today, because she allowed me to show you 
some beautiful watercolors that she painted of my father operating. And it, it's this connection between art and, and, and surgery, art and medicine, art and health, which I think is the way forward. But still people think, what has art to do with medicine? People still have this traditional, maybe this uh, dichotomy between medicine and the arts and the humanities, that they shouldn't be together. I completely disagree. I completely disagree. The arts and health, the arts and medicine go together like the hand into the glove. The visual arts can help medical schools turn out more accomplished physicians. So many medical schools now have art programs which are teaching students observational skills which help them to relate and to, to, to uh, be closer to the patient. Studying an art can help medical students think more broadly and entertain various possibilities before settling on a final interpretation. I'd like to mention quickly the image or the painting on the left, which is a self-portrait of Goya with his doctor. What's beautiful about this is the story behind it. It was dedicated to Dr. Arieta, and Goya left it in his will. So the, the arts and medicine now are, uh, there are people who do not believe that they should be together, but there are important uh, entities who see the importance of joining together the arts and humanities uh, with medical education. And this was published in uh, 2020, published during the uh, pandemic. And I will just read what it says. The arts teach creative means of expression, understanding of different perspectives, and awareness of knowledge and emotions throughout the human experience and the shaping and sharing of perceptions through artistic creation and practices in the expressive world. We are all humans. We are all persons. We all suffer. And the arts can help us get in contact with our suffering and other persons and other people's suffering. Here are some possible benefits, not only for professionals or students, but for everybody. The arts can help and the humanities can help develop critical thinking, can promote interdisciplinary research, stimulate the sense of inquiry and insight into the diversity. Look at the diversity today, which is extraordinary and so beautiful. But these three for me are, are so important in the world we're living in now. The arts and humanities can help us to learn to cope with uncertainty. Uncertainty for me is not something which is negative. Uncertainty pushes the world forward. Uncertainty makes, makes us want to inquire about other people and other cultures and other visions. We also need to be in contact with our emotions and doctors and health professionals do too. Empathy and compassion are critical. Now, these, these ideas or these, these, uh, these, these, these lessons are not only important for the professionals and for the patients, but also for those physicians and healthcare professionals who have suffered throughout the last three years with this pandemic, which, as I said before, has changed the world. The arts and humanities help them, help their well-being and help them become more resilient. But let us not forget that the world is a marvelous and beautiful place. And we must never forget, and we must teach everybody, and especially students, about the, the beauty 
And, and this, this beautiful word, awe, in the world we live in. A new book by Dad Chapeltner, investigating, a scientific investigation into awe, says, awe, by contrast, seems to orient us to devote ourselves to things outside of our individual selves, to sacrifice and to serve. So this is important. We need to be in contact with other people to help ourselves and to help others. There's a beautiful poem by Mayo, Mayo Angelo who says, as you get older, you learn you, you have two hands, one hand to help yourself and the other to help others. Picasso knew that the important thing was never to let go of the child within you. And he said, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once you grow up. So my advice and my hope is that we can all either keep our inner child or find our inner child again. Uh, and and, and I, I, I'm being a friend of my dad, Kapas, who's written about becoming who we are which talks about it, these, it, with his with his colleague, who's a shaman from a Native American uh, uh, tribe, whose name is Beautiful Painted Arrow, and they talk about becoming who you are for children from ten to a hundred years old. Keep that inner child; it's really important. I'm now going to just talk about some of the uh, ways that art can be used in healthcare and healthcare training. One example is visual thinking strategies. Here you see on the right students at the Low Art Museum. And they, by going into art galleries, they are, 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 are using that experience to, to, to learn how to observe better. To learn how to observe uh, works of art can help them to, to, to see and grasp and understand what the patients are going through. It's, it's, I think it's a beautiful way of teaching uh, healthcare uh, students. I, this is an example from a colleague of mine uh, who is in the Doctors of Humanists, which is my association, in which we are trying, my association, sorry, this association with many people working, uh, helping, supporting us uh, from all around the world. And not as many people as, as Unla's incredible, incredible uh, organization. Uh, Orania Varso is, is, a, is a, an anatomy teacher, lecturer in the University of Glasgow, and she uses art in the anatomy classes. Uh, she uses um, a hands on approach, interactive approach. She brings in what are books, originals by Vesalius into the into the dissecting room, into the anatomy classes, so that the, the students can compare works of art and the, uh, the, the cadaver uh, on, on the table. And also, uh, another, another professor doing incredible work from the University of Cape Town is Professor Leonard Shapiro. And I'm just gonna show you this quick video about what he's doing with medical students in Cape Town. How are we going to do this? <laughs> okay. Right, so let's go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
These are medical students. And look at the work of art they've produced and look at the happiness and the pleasure they get from producing that, from this beautiful, beautiful way of teaching them to use touch and sight. Now we can. I, I'm also connected to, I'm working in a project, an Erasmus project uh, between uh, seven universities in Europe, which is called Connected for Health. Now, the importance of this for me is that it's using both medical and humanities approaches to help young people with obesity and eating disorders. And one of my colleagues is using art therapy in this, in this, in this project. Uh, what she is doing, I will explain now. Uh, but first I will explain a little bit about art therapy, which is the use of different artistic expressions, music, plastic arts, theater, etc., in a therapeutic context. Through art therapy, the patient is proposed to work with different artistic mod modalities through which they will express their inner world, their inner self, and their conflicts. And Eugenia Nadalu, who's head of pediatric psychiatric nursing at Sonas Passes University Hospital here in Mallorca, where I live, is using arts therapy with children and teenagers with serious eating disorders. As she says, anger is one of the main emotions felt by these patients. And so her idea is by painting and by finger painting by getting their hands dirty with paint and creating, the patients will break this inner anger and then be able to remold it. This is non-verbal expression of what these young people are feeling. Because remember Picasso saying, you know, and remember, we have to look for the inner child. Children love to explore, to touch to turn objects around, to create. We must never forget, never lose the child within us. And, and Eugenia says that it's, it, these sessions are extraordinary because at the beginning, the teenagers say, oh, I don't want to get my hair dirty with pain to my clothes dirty. And in the end, they're covered in paint and the bonding with their peers. But also, interestingly enough, after this non-verbal communication or expression of what they're feeling, they start talking about their problems. Now, I said I was going to talk about a very personal example. And I would like to thank Mercedes Givalaldi, who's a pediatric oncologist, working also in Sonas Passes Hospital. And this is dedicated with love and great affection to her mother, Soledad del Castillo. Mercedes, when Mercedes told me about this, I was bowled over and amazed and astonished. Her mother was affected by a stroke at the age of 85. She couldn't even name the town she was born in but she drew it and she wrote the name of the river. Her daughter Googled it and, and saw how similar it was to the shape of the mountains. So somehow she was connecting with art, even though she couldn't speak. Miracles do happen. Soledad had never painted before her stroke, never. And then she began to copy Van Gogh. And beautiful copy, she began to express herself. So this is an example of the power of art. And I thank Mercedes for allowing me to use these very beautiful and very personal drawings and paintings. The power of art. Maria Popova said, the power to transcend our own self-interest and relate to the world and each other with more integrity, more curiosity, more wholeheartedness. And Tolstoy 
Art is a means of union and among men, joining them together in the same feelings and indispensable for life and progress toward more well-being of individuals and of humanity. Matisse, after his second operation, believed he would never paint again. But he did. From his bed, he made cutouts. And he says, every day that dawns is a gift to me. Do you remember the Kintsuchi Bowl? Well, Lydia Vives, an artist in Spain, did a body painting named Kintsuchi 19. And I strongly, strongly believe in the unique power of art to restore health and healthcare, to unify societies and cultures, and to help to mend a broken world. I invite you all to come to Barcelona in October 2023 and join us, the Doctors of Humanist, to try to bring back the heart and soul to medicine and try to